Midwife. We are three super fans who absolutely love Call the Midwife and are going through each episode one by one and just uh, basically looking, taking a humorous take on each episode. Um, my name's Alex. I'm a super fan. And uh, who else do we have here? We have me, Becky, another super fan. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm a super fan as well. Okay, so in episode three, Jenny Lee is gaining in confidence. She's been put on the district nursing rotor to look after Joe Collett. So Joe Collett needs his dressings changed from injuries that he suffered in the Boer War. Um, He lost his sons in the Great War and his wife in the Blitz. Jenny Lee's childhood friend Jimmy also arrives in Poplar. He actually appears at her window in the middle of the night and persuades her to let him sleep in the boiler room. Sister Evangelina continues to be short-tempered with Chummy, but after some awkward encounters between Chummy and Constable Noakes, she actually steps in to set them up on a date. We meet another geriatric mother, who is actually our age, Winnie and Ted Lawson, who come to the clinic together, having only discovered she was pregnant at 36 weeks. We also see more of Fred in this episode, who has another harebrained business venture. Right, so can I just say, disclaimer, the sleeping in a boiler room is not a euphemism. He genuinely was sleeping in the boiler room of Nanata's house. It's true. And just one more quick disclaimer. Um, as always, we do want to make the podcast friendly for everyone, but uh, there will be some adult themes and discussions that may not be appropriate for everyone. So just use your discretion as you wish. Right. So first off, <laughs> this I episode just say, is so good. Uh, well, I actually thought it was quite bleak. I think I may have been watching it when I was really hormonal at first, but like, oh, I found it quite a hard watch at times. Mm-hmm. I I didn't find it bleak. Which what part of it did you find bleak? Is it? I mean, the Joe Collett storyline. Yeah, is, like he's lost it, his whole family. He had like things that he li- lived in like bug infested like horrible little hovel I just felt really awful for him and Jenny was like ooh I don't know yeah okay. so Jenny, Jenny Lee is quite disgusted with his surroundings and yeah. the scene I liked in particular is where she's been tending to him she comes back to Nanata's house and she's like you are not going to believe it and then everybody's just like really nonchalant and like yeah yeah that's how it is we've seen yeah, every- before Jenny come yeah, on every- down Jenny every- everyone else is like this is just Tuesday for us um can I just say though like I yes the storyline with is it Joe call it yeah Joe call it yeah it is bleak and definitely that one really got me and I think I I feel like you know we're early in this series but I feel like something we could even add to these episodes is like how quickly did you start crying per episode because I swear I cry every single episode and a couple episodes I literally start within four minutes of the first I think going but um I do not mean to make light at all of of Joe's sad history, but the Boer War is the worst named war. So that <laughs> that is truly a terrible. You you just sat like you're. I, I just can't imagine the people who weren't in the Boer War had to say Boer War. Wait, pardon, what was that? Bo- and then like spelling it out the whole time. Boer War is a terrible name for a war. See, I, I say it like Boer, but I think I'm wrong. Again, like the Flying Squad, I think well, I'm wrong. Now, I think B O A R bore like as in the animal, right? What what actually? I mean, I, it, I think it's B O E R. I thought it was B O E R. Like boring, like like. No, that's B O R E, Jen. You're such I know a you're boring? American, but come on. Oh, B O E R. So is B O E R a place? Is it bore war like you say like a place? I don't think we need this in the podcast. But I feel like <laughs> it makes us look really thick. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, we, we could cut that all out, but um, well, no, here, okay, here, here's what I really will say. Yes, the episode is depressing, but this is something that happens where in, in episodes of a lot of series where you kind of forget, like once you've been watching for a long time, you forget not knowing people, you know, you're like, oh, I've, I just feel like I've always known them. And like, especially with Call the Midwife, Midwife it just feels like, every, you know, you just live in Poplar with all of them because they just all feel like your friends. And the thing about episode three is I forgot how pivotal it was in terms of introducing Jimmy, setting up um, Chummy and Noakes, like the, like there were a lot of really long standing storylines or like relationships or things that like really took a leap in this episode. And to me, that does make it extra special. That is true. But also, can I just say, right, firstly, I really loved the fact that they, they were concentrating on the district nursing because obviously they didn't just, they weren't just midwives. So I really like that side of it. 
Mm-hmm. And also, it's just you can only watch so many women grunting before you're a bit like, ooh, a bit queasy. Um, <laughs> but I really like the bit at the start where they show how Jenny's like toughening up because right at the very, very start, she's like, there's these two people, like a, a girl and a boy who were, you know, snogging in the corner or whatever. And they're like, ooh, you know, don't look at us. And she's like, be nice. I may be seeing a lot more of you. Like, she's obviously got more sass. She's learnt the street. Yeah, more. she's get, she's got a bit of confidence kind of now, isn't she? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. It's like toughening her up. But I do, I mean, it, it is bleak Joe Collett's situation, but he did have Jenny Lee at the end. So she did bring in quite a lot of comfort. And he was so lovely. Oh, he kept calling her my maiden. I know. My I maiden. Call me my maiden. <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. I it's don't so want to have to change their leg things, dressings though. So. <laughs> you would you would not be good for that. But you know, the district work actually is interesting because that's something that, you know, you think, oh, called midwife, there are all these pregnant women. There's plenty, you know, that's like plenty of work for them to do. But they do so much in the district. And I, I don't know if it's this episode or other episodes, but I feel like Sister Van, Sister Julian is always kind of doing that. Oh, well, I guess that means we're going to have to visit them twice a day, every day until they feel better, which is probably going to be six to eight weeks from now. And it's like, that's it's so much labor. That is so much extra work. And they're already like biking around miles, like trying to get to these people. And I just think it, it, it really just drives home. And they have the clinic and they have the maternity home and they have the home visits. And it's, it's a, just a lot of work. I mean... They, I feel like one of the bells they're always ringing on the show is just how understaffed they are there at Nona's house. And this episode to me really drove that home as well. Well, I think that also parallels with NHS right now, to be honest with you. But also, in <laughs> spoiler in general, spoiler alert, um, in later series, they've got um, Keep Fit to get to, Cubs and Scouts to get to, and uh, <laughs> Choir. So, you know. I don't know how these girls sleep. I mean... Well, they really. don't, obviously. Yeah, really. Mm. Okay, so wait, should we... Should we talk about the serious stuff first and then get to the more fun stuff or should we kind of mix? Um, well, why don't we do it with, right, so we do, why don't we say about Winnie and Ted first stuff? Like, do, let's do them. They're the older couple that just found out they're pregnant. Well, I wouldn't say yeah. she was older. She's actually 41, which is what I <laughs> turn in two right. weeks. And I've already been 41. So that's, you know, that makes me <laughs> feel a kind of way about that. Yeah. Oh, so the minute... Term- there's a term that Dr. Turner uses later on that's called like, what's it? It's like elderly paraxis or something like, or like, I, don't, I can't remember, but it's really horrible. And I just thought, oh my God, if anyone ever referred to me that way, I would just melt into like the floor. <laughs> but these, these terms are so, oh, it's like, who thought of that? Anyways. So the minute Winnie and Ted come into it, you know something is up because he's very attentive. They've both remarried. Now, one thing I do want to question here. So Ted's first wife died of cancer. Winnie's first husband walked out on her and was never seen again. Now, is she technically divorced? You know, I thought the exact same thing. I was like, oh, I wonder how they've done that. We should have looked up like 1957 marriage laws. But um, yeah, yeah, I I thought the same. Back then. Maybe she filed for like legal abandonment or something like that. I mean, hopefully, for Ted's well, sake. They probably couldn't even flame and file in them days. Yeah, that's true. They need their, like, dad to do it for them. Mm. Um, but you can tell definitely something is up because Ted is so excited. He's literally at the maternity appointment. He's talking to all the other women. He's like, oh, it's so great, you know? And then she's literally laying on the bed just kind of, like, gritting her teeth, you know, just waiting for bad news. So, yeah. Oh, he's so moment- lovely. Him and Joe are both so lovely in this episode. This is like the episode for lovely old men. If you're into lovely old men, <laughs> this is the episode <laughs> for you. Well, you know what's interesting, though? I feel like, okay, women are always, like, women are so heavily represented and, like, the full scope of, like, feminine humanity is so fully represented in the show. But I feel like they'll, like, do a thing with men where it's, like, okay, like, an episode with, like, a good guy and a bad guy or, like, all bad guys, but then the next episode, the guys are good. And I feel like they're constantly trying to, like, both, like, it's, it's just, a, it's just, you just bounce from, like, being torn up and then torn down, like, not torn up that's the wrong phrase but like they build you up and then they tear you down with some of these guys because you know yeah there's some really terrible men in the show but then there's also some really stellar ones and ted is really really a stellar ted one. is definitely i love ted yeah, yeah. Should, so, should we just, should, oh, go on. i was just gonna say should we just zoom to like um her going into labor because that's when like the whole plot like really well yeah but obviously for context she 
is she goes to the clinic at 36 week pregnant. She's been pregnant twice before, I think. So there's no chance she wouldn't know. She was really fat from pregnancy, like in her stomach. Mm-hmm. She knew she was pregnant, but obviously she was trying to avoid it. And it was all this weird. And Ted was all like, oh, I'm really glad, please. And she was all like, basically looked like panic, didn't she, the whole time. <laughs> um, and then you cut to the scene where she's about to tell Trixie something. Trixie comes around with her, uh, with a delivery pack, which she needed two weeks before, apparently, that they always do. Mm-hmm. And um, and basically she was like uh, about to say, like, you know how they do classic Club Me shows, like, oh, well. And then Ted walked in and she was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so anyway, it gets to the point where she's in labour, she's in the garden, she's hanging up some washing, and um, she's basically trying to not have a baby push up, fall out of her in the garden. Yeah. And Ted's like, you're in labour because I've read all the books. I know these things. So yeah. um, he brings the midwives. Cue the midwives. And, and can I just say this also is another early uh, example of a long line of women who start off anything with the midwives. Right? Any the labor part of the time with the midwives by saying, I can't have this baby. You don't understand. I really can't have this baby. And then, you know, like, then we have to figure out what it is about giving birth that they absolutely are just opposed to. And there's actually a myriad of reasons across the whole series, but there's a very real life. It's the most terrifying, horrible experience in the world. Well, I mean, yeah, no one would elect to go through labor if they could do it any other way. But, um, but she has a very specific reason as to why she can't. And Bex, do you want to reveal the reason? So she has had a one night stand and Ted is not the father, which we discover when the baby is born. But there's an extra reason why she's worried about that one night stand. Yeah, they weren't going to do a DNA DNA test straight away. (laughs) She she shouted, I'll do it. She shouted out. (laughs) (laughs) The baby is going to be black. Oh, I'm uh, worried it'll be black or something. I'm worried. Yeah, yes, yeah. She's she's very afraid that the baby is not going to be the same race as either of. Well, not fully. Which may basically race. mean not because she's not obviously not racist. She's you know obviously uh, <laughs> quite likes a black man, uh, but uh, she uh, she obviously will realize that Ted will notice that he isn't black and therefore the baby isn't his. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. And she's she and she feels very confident it's not going to be it's going to the baby is not going to come out as as a, you know. So what I love was at some point Dr. Turner is called. So when the baby's mm-hmm. born, everybody is kind of pauses for a moment and realizes what has happened. No, wait. But Dr. T- but Dr. Turner just says, I'll go and tell your husband, as in they're just, just gonna be over the fact that it's clearly not his child. Yeah. But you know what was actually interesting about that scene though? And not, and this happens every once in a while where the dad is so excited and is like a really sweet, good dad. And he wants to be in the room. And then for whatever reason, they're trying to like push him out of the room. And in that case, you know, Ted was like, oh, I want to hold her hand. I want to be there. Can I see the baby? And, you know, they're always kind of like fobbing him off for like 45 minutes. And um, I think it's though, I will say in those days, obviously the men weren't there for labor and they weren't there for the afterbirth or true. anything like that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, That's the baby's right. heart dropped, heart rate dropped, which is why they sent for uh, Dr. Turner. Oh, um, and also she was refusing to push, wasn't she? Because obviously she didn't want the baby to be born. Right. So yeah, that's why they called for Dr. Turner. Then the baby came and uh, there was uh, the cord was wrapped around his neck. Mm. Um, so uh, and it didn't breathe at first. And then I think obviously Winnie, who the Ted's wife, the one who'd just given birth, was then worried about the child being like, you know, what, what why, why are they not breathing? What, what's, why are they not why is it quiet and that kind of stuff so I feel like that kind of also showed that she did actually love the child like Mm. you know well um, and there's important and there's important context too because um you know she kind of reveals the big you know concern which is you know she had an affair with this you know black man and that it's gonna the baby's gonna be half black but the thing she says is you know because you kind of you instantly you're like you know you instantly feel really bad for Ted and you kind of feel like she's really guilty of having done something really horrible. But she says, you know, she's like, I had a really bad first marriage. I was alone. Ted and I kind of found each other. We did get married and he is a nice man, but at the beginning of our marriage for like a good amount of time, I just kind of wasn't really, you know, I wasn't really in love with him. I wasn't really that, you know, into it. And like over time, I find, you know, I did really kind of like start to fall in love with him. I realized how good he was. He was so good to my other children. He treated them like their own. And so, you know, like long after I had that one night stand with that other man, that's when I really started to feel all these affectionate feelings for Ted. And she's like, now I realize what I have in him. And I realize how special of a guy he is. And I'm just so worried and so scared that this is going to, tear it all apart and like break us up and everything so I mean she it's it's a very they they really 
do a good job of kind of understanding all the dynamics that are going in there and making both of those, you know, the husband and wife both very sympathetic. And so then when the baby is born and when Ted sees the baby for the first time, everyone's like, <gasps> yeah, I, I honestly expected him to throw the baby across the room. I was like, oh, like I was, <laughs> oh, no, I he was just going to storm out. I thought he was just going to storm out. No, I knew he would just totally love the baby, which oh, is what he did. He just yeah. said, the baby was so cute. Yeah, and he just picked it up and he was like, oh, what should we name it? Isn't that what it's he was like, you, like that? You, you decide, Ted, love. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what did they end up naming the baby? Does anybody remember? I uh, they named him Ted. Good old family yeah. name, Edward. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. That was it like was... him. I thought that was really good because that showed that he was really accepting of him, like family name yeah. is my family kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and, and let's not forget, like, in that time period, and the show will the show will kind of repeat this many many times. The the only kind of acceptable and I'm putting it acceptable in air quotes thing was to have a man and a woman having a healthy baby, healthy in every way, both physically, emotionally, mentally, whatever. And between two married people, two you know, and 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 really two white people. There, I mean, there aren't that many. This is not a very diverse community we're talking about here. And there, you know, aren't any really interracial relationships that are represented very well. So, um, you know, the fact that Ted is so accepting so instantly really, I feel like, says something especially powerful in a community like this. I just think you need more Ted's in the world. Oh, we- my God. We need, we need so many more Ted's. <sighs> right. Next storyline. Should we talk about Jimmy? Yes. Okay. All right. First question. What, what, are, what were our first impressions of Jimmy? Annoying. Oh, I thought he was, <laughs> I thought he was so cute. As soon as Jimmy turned up, I was just like, I, to me, cutie patootie, right from the word go. I knew you'd love him. <laughs> so Jimmy and Jenny Lee, have obviously, I mean, he mentions that they've been friends for 18 years. So they've, they've obviously been like childhood friends. Mm-hmm. He's now sleeping in the boiler room because he's got like, nowhere else to stay. Can I just say something on this point? Okay. Why does he have to sleep in the boiler room? Why couldn't like... Sister Julianne's a nun. There is literally no more virtuous uh, occupation. He well, could really? literally, Aunt Jenny could have been like to, to the sisters, like, oh, Jimmy's got nowhere to stay. Can he stay like on our couch or something? They would have said yes. Or no, they'd have been like, no oh, men are, put no up men with are Fred. Yeah, or he could have been put up with Fred for the night. Fred's got his own flat. Like, I just think it's ridiculous. Anyway, carry on, sorry. <laughs> well, Fred does catch Jimmy leaving the next morning. So Fred is fully aware that Jimmy is sleeping in the boiler room. So Fred mm-hmm. could have invited him a bloody bed, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, they do. Jimmy does say like, oh, like cause later on in the episode, he gets caught like later in the day, which is a big problem because everyone's already awake. And he said, oh, but it was so warm in there. Like it was just so cozy. I wanted, I just fell back asleep really easily. And so I think it's really, really cold. And so the boiler room is actually very comfortable. Well, there's that scene, isn't there, with the sister Bernadette where she's trying to like, um, she was trying to find out what the noise is in the boiler room. Obviously we know it's Jimmy. Mm-hmm. And Jenny Lee's trying to stop uh sister bernadette finding out and obviously we haven't really seen much of sister bernadette up to this point which is mental because mm. spoiler alert the whole thing's about her quite a lot <laughs> um but like it's so it's, it's, she was she's quite curt with jenny lee jenny yes. lee's basically just trying to she's done make a sure turn from this yeah her personality changes so yeah, much she was like i really course. do not i do not give a fig jenny like <laughs> go away jenny like I, I was like she would never be like that but that's before they developed a character, obviously. <laughs> yeah, she's just she's just another young nun, basically, in, at, the, at this point in the show. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I thought Jimmy was so cute from the from the word go. Like he, I mean, there's definitely complicated things to come about with him later. But Bex, you're the deciding vote on this. What's your opinion on Jimmy? I mean, you when he comes into it, you think he's going to be like a cheeky chappy, but there is a bit of an undercurrent with Jimmy because there's. We've seen a hint of a love interest with Jenny Lee at the very start when Trixie's asking her whether she's got kind of a special someone. Now, clearly, there's some sort of unrequited love on Jenny Lee's part towards Jimmy. Oh, really? Did you not pick up on this? No, I thought he loved her and she was having none of it. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Oh, I said it the wrong way around then. We were mental, like really, he <laughs> likes her <laughs> because she's basically rejected him. He yes. thinks because of that she must be a nun, and it just that really annoyed me about him. Well, mm. I think that was supposed to be an annoying scene as well. Like, so, so 
basically Jimmy overslept, Sister Bernadette nearly sprung him, but didn't. It was the mm-hmm. most ridiculous thing ever. He just literally walked behind her back like she wanted to just <laughs> turn around and see this man come behind her. Ridiculous. Anyway, but he was like in the hallway putting his shoes on. And um, and then uh, Sister Julienne comes around the corner like, oh, a man. And, uh, <laughs> and, and Jenny Lee's like, oh, um, um, yeah, this is my old friend Jimmy. He's just come round. And she's like, oh, stay for lunch. So they all have this really awkward lunch scene. Can I just yeah. say as well? Show me coming into that conversation. She's there talking about my friend's getting spliced. And then she sees Jimmy and like just goes silent. I thought that was lols. <laughs> Shows how inexperienced they are around boys. I just loved it. Well, especially Chummy. I mean, she kind of makes a whole thing about how she just does not know how to talk to men, which I mean, I hard relate on that one. So yeah. In fact, they her and Officer Noakes bump into each other because she's on her bike and she's a really bad bike rider at the beginning. And the awkwardness level of their conversation. I think what did she say to him? Oh, you know, well, as do you. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then he says, and then he says. As, as do you or something like it. They both repeat it like three times and poor sister Evangelina stood there like, I cannot go with this. <laughs> She's like, I'm a nun, but I have more game than either of these two combined. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's good um, is that honestly, like they wouldn't have gotten together until, you know, like 50 years later if it hadn't been for Evangelina. And- um, Well, so- I'm we'll get on to that in a minute. Let's do oh, the Jimmy. Okay. Let's do the who, the rest of Jimmy? Yeah. Oh, what else is there to say? To be honest, I think we have actually done it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, to your point, I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy is a big character. A lot more will happen later on, but I think in, the, I think in this episode, really, the point of him is to kind of just introduce him, establish if he and Jenny have a long term relationship. He does seem to have a bit of an extra soft spot for her. We think he's kind of got a bit of a crush on her. Well, everyone keeps she- saying it to Jenny, which I think is quite annoying. Like Joe does as well. Like, oh, I, I do believe this young man's got a soft spot for you. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy is a good guy because he steps in. Um, Joe Collett has got to go to a reunion and he kind of steps in and transports yeah. him and Jenny Lee there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well it's a reunion he's not been able to go to for years. And, and it's, so and he's it's a, a good guy. Of, it's a reunion of veterans or it's a reunion for like people who've lost people in the war. I can't no, no, veterans, yeah. Veterans. veterans. Okay, right. And he's like got all these like war pals that he hasn't been able to see ever because he's not been able to travel and Jimmy does war help pals. war pals <laughs> well I don't you know like yeah like I don't know Brigadoon BFFs I'm not I don't know what correct terminology is there but um anyways he but but Jimmy comes through and finds a way to help Jenny out when she doesn't kind of feel like she has any way to make something happen for this patient who she's really developed a lot of you know tender feelings for oh I love Joe I'm just gonna oh. keep repeating that I love Joe and I love Ted He's so sweet. Oh, but then the thing about Jenny and that this relates to Jimmy as well is that Jenny is getting over a, well, we're not sure at the time, but like a a relationship with a man that's very mysterious. And so she's, so one of the reasons that she kind of can't open herself up to anybody else is because she's still really closed off because of this previous romantic relationship. Which can I just say, when we do hit upon this romantic relationship in the future. Horrible. Honestly. Yeah, I'm just really glad they dropped that stuff. Spoiler alert, they dropped it. I loved it. Right. Yeah. Now, okay. um, right, Chummy and P- uh, it's Peter. Chummy and Peter. Oh. Isn't this so, one of the all-time best storylines and couples of the whole show ever? The whole world ever, not just the show. Like, you oh. know, Titanic can have up. <laughs> so, Chummy, obviously, <clears throat> leveled um peter with her bike um that was one of the things she said that was hilarious so they met up and he was like oh i would love really love that she was just out with her sister angelina and he was like oh oh uh, uh, i'd really like to uh to have some more of that um whiskey that you got me it was great and she was like oh i'm sure that can be arranged um not not um not purposely um leveling you with my, my bicycle like I just loved the way she said it and it was all really awkward like so more <laughs> than my impression then you're and literally then like, yeah you you're... Look, and, and do you and, and do you look well like it was just awful and then <laughs> they, later they, on almost, the... they almost were at the episode of saying like and also with you like they to yeah. each other it was almost that awkward it they would so have done good. that if sister Evangelina wasn't stood there so she was like come on we're going 
So anyway, <laughs> then um, later on in the episode, uh, PC Noakes had to go round to Nanata's house. He went to warn Fred because Fred's been making um, toffee apples and slaughtering chickens as you do. <laughs> Uh, Which just same sounds place. horrific. People have bought toffee apples that are covered in blood and feathers. Like, can you think of anything worse? Just Again, the health department was created for people like this. Like, Fred is literally the reason for so much modern sanitation regulation. No, no, but Fred's like, I'll fight him. I will. I'll fight them in court. And he's like, just go, just go and fix it. So he was like, yeah, I'll do that. So he runs off. Absolutely fine. Yeah. So he runs off, gets it fixed or whatever. Um, he didn't go to prison, spoiler alert, so it's fine. <laughs> um, so anyway, the PC Notes is then stood there with Chummy and, um, oh, it's just really awkward. So um, he's like... But wait, what, no, what but, just, he... just, but just set the scene a little bit. Chummy's there, Noakes is there, but then they're at, like, the lunch table and a bunch of the other, like... Trixie's Sister Sister Sister. there. Yeah, Trixie's there, like, Cynthia, I think, is there, Sister Evangelina's there, so, like, a lot of people are there even though you know they're you know and he's kind of like looking at her and she's looking at him and it's like well we want to talk but like neither one of them know how and they definitely don't know how when all these other people are around and everyone is looking like at each other and at them just like wondering like how is this gonna how is this gonna go forward <laughs> i do love the way when sister evangelina is basically like chummy would you like to accompany officer noakes to the pictures <laughs> Off the notes. Would you like to accompany Chummy? And Trixie's basically like looking from one to the other. <laughs> it is amazing, and also she's like, "I'm so glad that I am a nun." Like it was just <laughs> amazing, like proper amazing. <laughs> yeah, and she was like, "Thank God, now you can just like go on a date and leave all of the rest of us in peace and stop driving us crazy with your horrible flirting." That's the most <laughs> awkward and painful thing. My favorite part of that scene, though, was how long it took for Chummy and for PC Noakes to say yes. But when <laughs> they did say yes, they were both like beaming, smiling, and oh, it just absolutely got my heart. I loved it. Oh, it's so sweet. And Peter is such a. I mean, talk about Ted's in the world. We need Peters in the world. He is truly one of the best male characters ever. Do you know why he's lovely though? Um, do you know why? why he's one of the best? Because he just does whatever Chummy wants him to. Like he's just exactly. <laughs> like he doesn't really have much of a personality. He's just like yeah. Whatever. But talking about the male characters, we see a lot more of Fred in this episode. We do. Yes. And just his interaction around an artist's house. And I did love the, I think it's one of the opening scenes where he's basically, he's he's doing something with his back to everybody. Everybody sat around the table and then he's chattering away to everybody. And then everybody slowly leaves and he's just left in an empty room. Mm-hmm. Fred, Fred, I feel like he's one of those characters that like whenever you have a loose end or whenever you don't really know, you know, like he's, he's a perfect foil for kind of, um, he's like a, like a catch-all for everything like whenever something needs doing it's like oh give it to fred like if we ever need like a little bit of extra zaniness like here's fred with like toffee apples like tarred and feathered in blood you know what i mean like fred is always kind of like that very reliable he does a lot of stuff with the cub scouts which is so fun like in later episodes he'll be santa claus which is so fun like i think fred is just a good yeah he's yeah he's another good guy Mm -hmm. he's another one syllable good guy joe Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fred ted (laughs) (laughs) <sighs> they're working all day and all night all they have is time is one syllable name do you think if, like benedict cumberbatch came in there that they'd even be able to talk to him they'd be out the door before they'd be able to say his first name that is true that is true yeah it's true yeah so yeah um, so basically i feel like this episode was like as beck said it was very much building us up for other stuff like you know in the future mm-hmm. bits like you know so that we're building the scene for chummy and pc noakes you know, we're building them, seeing that they do district nursing as well. Like, I feel like it was a very, mm-hmm. it was a good episode for that. Well, and and on a bit of a more sad note, but the thing about Joe's storyline is that even though, you know, um, Jenny is tasked with going to see him very frequently, every single day, twice a day, you know, something like that. And she does have that beautiful moment with him where she takes him to go visit his, you know, like fellow veterans that are all kind of celebrating the anniversary of their service. His war pals, you know, war pals, just, you know, as you do. Um, 
they also have a the, another part of that storyline is that the building that he's living is going to be demolished and it, they have to rehome all of the people who live there and he doesn't get to keep he has to be rehomed as well they put him in a senior center basically that they've built yeah and he's lived but there for 50 years with his two kids and his wife who are all dead so that's the yeah. last thing he has of them it's the only place they've all been together and then when he goes to the new place he doesn't get to really take any of the stuff that he loves, like none of his furniture, like none of his like mementos and everything. They just well, also I don't know he doesn't get the same care. Like they just yeah, that's what I was going to say. He doesn't and, get the same level of care as with the district nurses coming out to him. Yeah, well, and we haven't actually spoken about the fact that he dies. Yeah, he passes away at the end, which is which is another kind of I I feel like again this is kind of an interesting place for Jenny because she's starting to get more comfortable with you know the work that she has to do, but then she's also still getting knocked back and realizing how much she still has to learn and how much she doesn't really understand about you know this kind of community and what's really going on and um, like him him getting rehoused, him dying at the end is a really painful lesson for her and kind of the limits of her you know, nursing ability and everything to, to reach the clients that she wants to reach, how she wants to reach them and when she wants to reach them. And um, it also kind of hints at some of the bigger issues that are going on in Poplar, which they talk about through the series as well, which is, you know, kind of the fate of various parts of this neighborhood. So there is one bit though, when he's like, Oh, don't cry Jenny. When he's not obviously like, you know, his legs have been amputated and he's like, can you itch them for me? Scratch them for me. And she's like, Oh, and he's like, don't cry. (laughs) And she just carries on crying loudly. Um, <laughs> and he like basically falls asleep next to her. I thought, Jenny, hang on. He just asked you not to do that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. right. On that note, heroes and zeros of the week. Okay. Go ahead, Bex. My hero is Ted. <sighs> My zero is Winnie for cheating on Ted. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ro- roasting her for like, oh my goodness gracious. Um, okay, my hero is uh, Joe's use of the term "my maiden" because it is it is so sweet and literally just one of the most beautiful things that someone could say, but like truly not able to be pulled off by almost anyone. And so he just pulls it off so beautifully. And I would I would love to work with someone who called me my maiden and that it was really sweet. Um, zero is district rehousing and putting you know an old man who's lived his whole life in one place into like a really charmless you know it was bug infested it was it was bug infested but there there's the way to handle these kind of things that's better than how they handled it so i think they could have done better by joe so that's my zero right well my hero is um sister evangelina because she Uh, got chubby and uh pc and oaks together and honestly that scene just kills me every time (laughs) it's just she she plays it the comedy perfectly uh, and my zero, I'm afraid, ladies, is going to have to be Fred. And I love him, and I really love him. But he was feeding children toffee apples <laughs> with blood and feathers on it. Which I don't think, I don't think that's, well, number one, we know it's not legal. Number two, morally, it's not right. I'm sorry. No matter how much many quick, rich, debt rich, quick schemes you want to be doing, not right. <laughs> I, th- I think all those are good ones. I have yeah. to say, I really, I, I especially like Evangelina's matchmaking. Yeah. Uh, we, need, we need more of her matchmaking skills in, in the world. I need somebody like that in my life. Well, I think it sets Sister Evangelina up, doesn't it? Because we are going to come to care for a bit more than we do right now. Well, She's I been a bit short her. up until now. <laughs> <laughs> she- she is one of the best and most complicated characters on the show because I I feel like I feel like even as a viewer you feel so close to her like she'll like she'll say something and it'll really cut you to the core and then she'll do something so sweet and it'll make you feel like you really love her and like you just want to take care of her and I sister Evangelina I really love her character she is she both the, the woman who plays her is amazing and just the way that they develop her through the years is thing is though so I think that's a, that's true of a lot of the characters in it like most of the characters in this like it is I remember weird. Becky telling me she didn't like Trixie much, much at first and no I didn't oh yeah, you didn't. But now now, <gasps> now I, do, I don't really care for Jenny Lee now mm, I, be yeah, I'm, okay. I'm totally with that so yeah 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 well we'll, t- we'll talk about that later but I'm I'm with you my my feelings about her have evolved a little bit over time too but so oh. ladies it's uh it's now the end Show. Yeah. Um, and I'd uh, just like to thank everyone for listening. We hope that you join us next time. Yay!
for series one episode four leave a comment or post a review